Hi third graders and happy Monday. Our day is almost done. I have loved interacting with a lot of you on Google Classroom and I look forward to having more of you joining soon. Um, not a ton posted this week. Today your biggest things were to do was to get on IXL and Prodigy. Um, I wanted you to complete two or three stars on IXL before the day is done um, and then spend 15 to 20 minutes on Prodigy. Um, if you are on the Google Classroom, I put a survey on there for you to do. And parents, I also emailed out a survey that I would like for you to do. Um, I did want to just finish today with reading a little bit of The Secret Zoo. But I do have announcements. Um, and I want you to kind of be aware of what this next couple weeks are going to look like. So, being on Google Classroom is the best way to get continual information. I'm going to be posting videos of me going through those work packets with you. Um, and then Miss Scamper and Mrs. Quinn are also going to be making videos um, going through some of the packets as well. So I'm hoping that a lot of you are getting them at home already. Um, more are coming this week. We're really going to dive into those next week. So feel free to look at them, but don't feel like you have to get started with them. Um, I want you to continue checking your emails. Parents, you did an amazing job staying up to date with that pre spring break um, and I want to keep that going after spring break. My goal is to have all of the kids on Google Classroom so that they can see the assignments right there. Just a reminder, I am going to be running Google Classroom from 9 a.m. till 3 um, but you can reach me beforehand or after as I know everyone's schedules are a little bit different right now. Um, I want you working really really hard to learn. Um, <laughs> You're going to be going into fourth grade next year, so I want you to be prepared as we go into that. So make sure you're being responsible for your learning, and I look forward to finding more ways to interact with you on Google Classroom. Please keep working hard and know that I have the best interest in mind um, as I'm creating all of these things. I love you bunch, and I've loved getting a lot of really encouraging notes from all of you today, too. You're doing a great job showing me compassion, as that is our moral focus of the week. So... On that note, it has been a bit since we have read The Secret Zoo. And I keep calling this Secret Zoo Keeper, but it's just The Secret Zoo. So let me refresh my memory of what was happening. We're on Chapter 5 now. So before this, um, the brother Noah, he went to the zoo and he got a message from Mr. Talltail. Um, so he's kind of trying to figure out where his sister Megan is. So Chapter 5, Investigating the Forest of Flight. The Forest of Flight exhibit was in a building that stood 40 feet high. Because of its enormous dome roof, the building always made Noah think of a giant igloo. The walls and roof were made of the same tinted glass that was used on the windows of fancy cars. The exhibit was open. People would walk among freely flying, like freely flying birds. The moment Noah strolled through the entrance, the earth smelled pause. Sometimes even Miss Heiser makes mistakes while reading. I'm going to start over. The moment Noah strolled through the entrance, the earthy smell of soil and tree bark invaded him. Trees and flowery plants filled the dome with fragrance and rich oxygen. Small waterfalls cascaded down rocks and threw mist into the air. The forest of flight looked and felt like a miniature jungle. Birds soared overhead and a variety of sound echoed off the wall. Water splashing, children laughing, streams rumbling, and birds chirping and squawking. A poster with a chart was pinned to the wall near the entrance, displaying pictures of 50 different birds, just as Megan had described. Noah stopped for a minute to search the chart. Halfway down, he recognized one of the birds and gasped. It had a blue body, a bright red bill, and an orange belly. Without doubt, this was the tiny bird that had flown into his room. The chart said it was a Malchite kingfisher named Marlow. Marlow, Noah said aloud. He looked at the tree lips. Marlow, are you here? He headed down a misty path where enormous umbrella leaves draped above him like a live green ceiling. Droplets of water plopped on his shoulders and the top of his head. Around him, a variety of birds perched on branches and steel beams, while a few floated on streams and ponds and other pecked at seeds on the ground, looking more bored than hungry. So I'm going to make a connection and I want you to do this while you're reading or listening as well. So as I'm reading, they're describing this bird area. Um, I don't like birds. So I'm remembering this scene. Um, they're painting a really good picture in my head, but 
Um, I'm going to remember this part of the story better because I don't like birds freak me out. So I'm going to pause in a little bit and I want to see if you can make a connection. Noah scored the forest of flight for Marlo but couldn't find him. He searched, his search led him to a concrete wall, that wall that had the holes in it, which was what he'd come to see. The holes were about 10 feet apart from the ground, 10 feet up from the ground, and 8 inches across. They were dark, the kind of dark that someone could keep secrets in. Noah took his seat on the bench that Megan had written about. He folded his hands across his lap and said under his breath, This is where Megan sat not long ago. The thought of her sitting here alone made him sad. Noah watched the wall and waited, and waited, and waited. Birds flew in and out of the holes. One had a beak full of straw, and Noah guessed that it was building a nest. He continued to sit and watch. An hour later, a voice announced through a loudspeaker that the zoo was preparing to close. Within minutes, people had cleared out of the forest of flight. Noah was alone. If something significant was going to take place, he thought it might be now. So I'm going to pause. I want you to think if you have a connection with that. Um, just think about what Noah's doing. He's just waiting and waiting. Has there ever been a time where you've had to wait a really long time? What did that feel like? What was going through your head while you were waiting? More time passed, except for the chirps and fluttering of the birds. The building was silent. Noah, now that Noah was alone in the building, it seemed larger than ever. Through the glass walls, he watched the sky dim as the sun fell into the autumn slumber. Noah began to worry that he might be locked in the zoo for the night. Suddenly, a tiny bird swooped down and perched on a branch directly in front of him. It had a blue body, a red beak, and an orange belly. Marlo! The bird cocked his head, first to one side and then to the other. He ruffled his feathers and blinked so many times in a split second that Noah couldn't count the blinks. The boy rose from the chair. Marlo, do you, do you understand me? Marlo cocked his head back and forth again and leaped into the air. He circled a clump of trees and landed back on the branch uh, in front of Noah. Noah's jaw dropped. He glanced over his shoulder. As far as he could tell, he was alone, alone with Marlo. This is really happening, he said. Marlo sprang off the branch and left it trembling. He darted through the air and disappeared into one of the holes. How deep are those things? Noah wondered. He stepped forward, wrapped his hand around a rail, and locked his gaze on the hole, waiting. Come on, Marlo, he mumbled. The zoo's got to be closing, and I... Marlo shot out of the hole, etched another circle in the air, and landed on an open branch. Noah's attention bounced between the bird and the hole. A minute later, another bird darted out. This one was green with a yellow beak. The idea occurred to Noah that he should be taking notes the way Megan had done. He plucked a pen from his jacket and wrote on the edge of Megan's note paper, Marlo, a green bird, and a green bird. A few minutes later, a bird with long wings emerged from the hole. Under green bird, no wrote, bird, long wings. A fourth and fifth bird flew from the hole. Noah simply scrawled the numbers four and five. He waited, keeping his gaze fixed on the wall and his pen poised on the paper, but nothing happened. He started to wonder whether anything more than this was going to take place. Five birds had appeared, but they seemed insignificant. So insignificant means they seemed like it didn't really matter. All of a sudden, more birds shot out of the hole, each one directly on the tail of the bird ahead of him. They were flying so close to one another that they blurred together in a stream of colorful feathers. In a matter of seconds, hundreds of birds filled the forest of flight. They dived through the treetops, perched on the branches, and skimmed the glass walls. Their wings made so much noise that Noah dropped Megan's paper and plung, plugged his ears. He felt as though he was in a dream, a dream that was at once strange and magnificent and terrifying. What's happening? he hollered. He closed his eyes and braced himself for what would be next. The birds flew around him, fanning his skin with mild gusts of wind, making him feel as if he were standing in the center of a tiny tornado. The experience was exciting and frightening. He didn't know if he should scream in panic or scream in delight, so he just screamed. Ha ha! Chirping, whistling, squawking, and cawing, the birds circled him and filled the forest of flight with their strange musical chatter. Their feathers brushed his cheeks. Noah had no sense of how much time was passing. Several seconds or minutes? He became certain that he would be carried off, that the birds would try to squeeze him into the hole in the wall and take him to some unknown place. 
but a moment later the noises stopped and the air became still. Noah heard only the gurgling streams and splashing waterfalls. He opened his eyes. Leaves and feathers floated around him like ash from a campfire. He looked up at the hole just in time to see the last bird plunge back into it. As effortlessly as they had filled the exhibit, they had exited. Those that had been there throughout the day went about their normal business, circling treetops, munching seeds. The hole in the wall looked ordinary. A bird coasted out of it, snatched some twigs, and flew back in. Wait, Marlow! Noah scanned the treetops. He saw no sign of the bird. Marlow, what happened? I... The sound of footsteps rose in the distance. A man with a ball-shaped belly plodded up to Noah, wagging his finger and saying, Young man, what are you doing here? The zoo's closing! Excuse me, Noah said. He snatched up Megan's snow and slipped it into his pants pocket. You want to get locked in here? Come with me. Let's go. The man scanned the exhibit. Noah saw his eyes rest briefly on the hole in the wall. He put his hand on the boy's back and escorted him to the door. Once outside, Noah rushed toward the zoo exit. He was so confused that he felt sick. So much had happened in just a few hours. He pushed through the clutches of the turnstile, raced across the parking lot, and ran down the sidewalk next to Walker's Boulevard. At his house, he dropped on the couch and sat almost without moving until his parents returned home. He spent the evening in a daze and went to bed before dark. Night fell, but he was unable to sleep. He lay in bed, scanning the shadows in the half-moon light that filtered through the window, thinking about the events at the zoo. His gaze happened upon his jacket, which he tossed onto a chair. He saw something sticking out of the pocket, something he hadn't put there. He climbed out of bed, walked to the chair, thrust his hands into the pocket, and pulled out a piece of crumpled paper. This time, it was exactly what he expected. Another note from his sister. During the commotion of the forest of flight, a bird must have slipped it into his pocket. He smoothed out the paper and sat on his bed to read it. When he finished, he clutched it to his chest and declared, I cannot do this alone. He knew he had to find help. That meant it was time to round up the bravest kids he knew. It was time to call on the Action Scouts. And that ends chapter five. Our next chapter is chapter six. Chapter 6, Sharing a Secret. Um, stay tuned as I will continue reading this. Um, I love you all bunches, and I look forward to logging into Google Classroom with you tomorrow.